Hey, welcome back to another episode of Camping Camera. Today we're going to pick back up trimming out the doors and getting it ready for skin and hardware. So let's get started. Last time we took the uh, L molding and the T molding around a um, uh, kind of a quarter round curve and it tried to kink a little bit. This time we're actually taking around that somewhat of a corner and it's really going to try to kink this time. So I need to make some decisions of do I want to let it kink and then beat that kink out or do I want to try to find a way to keep it from kinking. Now one viewer, uh, subscriber suggested that I trim it down a little bit to where it's not as wide. I could do that. Somebody suggested heat. Um, somebody suggested to let it kink and then just sand it out and polish it out. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do there. Okay, again, so uh, one of the viewers sent a suggestion in of trimming the inside corner down, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch. So I did that. I just took a pencil and marked off about that much and trimmed it back with a Dremel tool and a hand file. And now there's a little bit of a kink there because I did that after I'd already, you know, saw a kink, you know, developing, um, but it kept the kink from getting any worse. So I'm thinking that possibly it wouldn't have kinked at all if I would have started doing it that way. Um, but the kink that's there is a very shallow one. I didn't let it get too far. I should be able to bend that out. So the suggestion of trimming off the inside uh, corner of that curve a little bit, that really I think is going to it's going to be good. Um, I'll, I'll try to do that on the rest of those. So thank you very much for that suggestion. I appreciate that. Now it's time to butt a piece of L trim and a piece of T trim up to the um, previous trim that I put down. I'm going to start off with this L trim here and I cut just a little bit of a bevel on the uh, 3 16 inch lip that will be around the, um, the inside of the door. So I'll start by putting that here and I'll just butt that up against the other piece and clamp it in place. And like I did before, I'll just start working my way around, clamping it in place, making sure that the, uh, the bend and the contour of the metal fits the profile of the door. Okay, so here's where we find out if it worked. And looks like there's about a 30 second of an inch gap which will uh, fill in nicely with some trim pro caulk. So that's perfect. Great. Okay, now it's time to put up the uh, last piece of T-molding on this one door. Um, as you can see, I've cut it at an angle and then I've beveled the very end of, of this one side here just a little bit. And the reason is I want it to just match up with the other piece whenever it's put on. So uh, we'll just repeat the steps that we did before, bending it and clamping it and putting some screws in it as we go around the uh, perimeter. Okay. 
All right, I have the uh, T and L molding trim around the door on the first door now. Now I'm gonna try to fit it inside of the, uh, the hole in the wall of the camper. I put a couple shims on the bottom of the uh, door frame here um, towards the back and towards the front just to uh, make sure I've got a little space between the bottom of the door and the bottom of the frame. And I'm hoping I'll have about an even space all the way around. So let me get the door and we'll find out. So I have two shims on it. <clears throat> That's a little too much. Let me pull one shim out. Shims are about a sixteenth of an inch. So looks like I have about a sixteenth of an inch clearance all the way around the perimeter. Um, that's just a little tighter than what I'd like for it to be. But running my fingers around the uh, the inside of the door frame and the outside of the door, it looks like the screw heads are not completely flush in the trim. So I'm going to uh, re-countersink those just to make sure those heads are in really well. Because those heads, some of those heads are sticking up about a 32nd of an inch. So I may be able to get another 16th of an inch out of uh, recessing those screw heads. And overall that would be almost an eighth of an inch. I don't think I'm quite a 16th um, on those two measurements. But cumulatively they'll be close to an eighth, probably 3 30 seconds. And that should be a respectable gap around there. I just want to make sure that when I mount the hinges on the door and I close the door, the weight of the door doesn't make the door sag and hit the bottom of the frame. So I want to have you know enough clearance where that don't happen. So I'll re-countersink the heads, try it again, and my gut feels we're going to be okay, but we'll find out. sinking some of the holes and I went with the smaller head. I went with a number six instead of a number eight head to make sure that the uh, heads of the screws were below, at or below the surface of the aluminum because I was thinking that perhaps those screws protruding out a little bit was taking up some of the, the space around the door making it tight. So I've done that and it's actually still a little bit snug. Now I have a couple spacers on the bottom of the door just to make sure that the door's not resting on the bottom of the door frame. Um, I don't guess I'm really going to know how well this thing fits until the spacers are gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mount my chrome hinges. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and mark the location, drill those, and get those mounted. And when that's done, I can take the spacers out and try opening and closing the door. If there's just a small spot or two that the door is catching, I should be able to tweak that and make some adjustments. If it's still too tight around the perimeter, even after that, I'll just pull the trim off, take my belt sander, maybe sand a sixteenth of an inch off the perimeter of this door all the way around, put the trim back on. Uh, really don't want to have to do that. It'll probably take me, you know, an extra hour, um, you know, in the process. But uh, we'll see how that goes. So right now I'm just going to use my door template. I'm going to lift it up here and mark off the locations of the hinges, of the hinge mounting locations, and uh, that way I can start drilling some holes. Now where these doors are going to stick out from the sidewall of the camper <clears throat> a little bit, especially when I put the rubber seal around them, I'm going to be mounting the hinge flush to the door, but I'm going to have to put a spacer behind the front part of the hinge that bolts to the camper to account for that space. Uh, just looking at it, it looks like it's going to be about a quarter of an inch. Um, 
I'll probably just cut that out of a little, I don't know, I could cut it out of a block of aluminum. Or I've got some UHMW plastic. I may uh, may cut that out. That way it'll be weatherproof. But we'll, uh, we'll cut that spacer, mount some hinges, and see what kind of space we have in the door when we open and close it. Now you'll probably notice that I'm putting wood screws in here right now. This is just temporary. My plan is to put some T-nuts or some blind nuts on the on the inside of the wall and use machine screws uh, with probably like a, um, a security head on them, one of those tamper resistant heads. But this is just a uh, temporary fastener here. Okay, this is the moment of truth. I've anxiously been waiting this moment and dreading it at the same time. Right now the door is setting on two shims that's between it and the bottom of the door and the bottom of the door frame. And I've got the hinges mounted, so I'm going to open the door, pull the uh, spacers out, the shims out, and see how it does. Um, about to need a drum roll for this because if it's still really tight when I try to open and close it, that means I'm gonna to have to pull some trim back off and sand maybe, I don't know, 30 second, 16th of an inch off the perimeter of the door with the belt sander and then put the metal back on. I can certainly do it. It'll probably take me an extra hour, so I'm really, really hoping this works. So here we go. Let me pull the shims out. Well, how about that? Son of a gun, it works. Man, that's good news. I cannot tell you how excited I am right now. I don't feel it catching on anything. Wow, this is really, really great. So this is a big success. We've got a uh, door framed up with the aluminum trim. We have two hinges installed, so I know it's going to open and close and, and work okay. Uh, been planning, drawing things out, and uh, looks like it's all going to come together. So next time, we'll uh, hopefully have the skin on. I don't know if it's going to be green, like the original pictures I drew, um, or if it's going to be the ivory color, the color of the camper. If you have any suggestions, put that in the uh, comments below. Um, but hopefully next time we'll have that done. And well, I'm actually going to have to pull this aluminum back off and put some caulk underneath, like some uh, Trim Pro 635 caulk. Don't know that I'll do a video just to put caulk on, but um, do want to do a video on the door latch mechanism. I came up with, I think it's a pretty slick design, an inexpensive design for a door latch. And it's going to be something similar to the latches I did on the hatch, be using some T handles. So check back for that and appreciate you watching and hey don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up with uh, more videos from camping camera take care and we'll see you later